Uh, welcome to our midweek Bible study. We're going to be in Ezra today, um, chapter 6. Um, so if you'll turn there, we'll pray and get started. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. The Lord, help us to get it right today, Lord, as we just walk through this uh, great chapter, great study, uh, great book. Lord, we just look forward to uh, what you have for us today. And uh, we just pray for your direction and guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we're in Ezra chapter 6, and, and 4 and 5, um, we saw some adversaries of um, Israel kind of come, and, and they wanted to join them in helping them build the temple, uh, but because of their idol worship and, and some of the uh, questionable um doctrine and, and they just didn't mesh so they just were politely um, um, asked not to join them and so they in turn wrote a letter to the king saying hey these guys are building they they lied about them they called them rebellious they don't pay taxes and so this decree went out to stop building and they use political they use psychological warfare we see that they they hired people to come and, and kind of uh, mentally mess with their heads. And, and so as a result, they stopped building and uh, they'd stopped building for about 15 years. And then Hosea, or I'm sorry, Haggai, uh, the prophet came, uh, you can read about this in Haggai chapters one and two and told them, look, you've built your houses and, but you've neglected the house of God. And he motivated them and encouraged them to start building. And then after that, uh, um, the governor of the city, this is now about 15 years after they stopped, Tetanai came and, and, and said, hey, what are you doing? And they said, well, who gave you permission to, to start building? And they said, well, verse 11 of chapter 5, we are the servants of the God of heaven and earth. So we do what God tells us to do, basically was their answer. But then verse 13 of chapter 5, it says, however, in the first year of Cyrus, the king, so then they reminded them, they did have permission from King Cyrus. In fact, he, he put a decree out to build it. And so at the end of chapter 5, uh, Tetanai sends a letter to Darius, the current king, and uh, to say, hey, could you kind of search out, if you look at verse 17 of chapter 5, uh, he says, search and be made in the treasure house, which is in Babylon, whether it is so that a decree was issued. Was there a decree at all? You know, if there is a decree, well, that'll have to change. But uh, I think they're hoping there's not a decree that maybe Israel is lying. So that brings us to chapter six. In chapter six, um, King Darius issued a decree and a search was made in the archives where the treasures were stored in Babylon. So um, the response of uh, Darius is, well, let's find out. And this is one of those interesting verses, just as a little side note, um, that um, um, it's, not, it's not frustrating, that's not the right word, but it, it is, I really wanted this verse to be Darius that threw Daniel into the lion's den. I wanted this to be the same Darius and I wanted, you know, this is, um, uh, I wanted this to be the story that Darius threw down in the lion's den. Uh, he was tricked into it. He went and, and kind of was hoping that Daniel's God would have protected him. And now Darius, because of this great event with Daniel is motivated to help the Israelites. Um, but going down that rabbit hole of, of research, uh, it doesn't appear to be the same guy. There's, there's some differences with them. I won't uh, bore you with those historical differences. Uh, but there's, there's no, I have no confirmation it's the same one. Uh, and most uh, theologians, commentators agree that it's not. And most Bible dictionaries, you can go ahead and look up Darius or research it for yourself. They appear to be different. Darius seems to be kind of like Caesar. It's more of a title than a name. Um, so it's not essential to this chapter. It would have made a good 
preaching to be the same, that Daniel's testimony led Darius, and now Daniel's testimony is protecting the Israelites, uh, uh, but it doesn't appear to be so. Uh, but still, Proverbs 20, verse 1, is, is very clear that every king is, is in the hand of God, and he moves them like the rivers, and, and God is where the focus should be anyway. So look at verse 2. Uh, at Achmatha, in the palace that is in the province of Medea, a scroll was found, and in it a record was written. And so they go to this place called Achmatha, which uh, actually means house of scrolls. So this was not in the, the main part of Babylon. It was a little bit north, and it was kind of where, you know, the, the Library of Congress and the archives in our nation were. You can go and look at the Declaration of Independence or things like that. So uh, they had a place where they kept some of their scrolls and some of their history, and they searched it out and they went. And, and I just want to stop here that, that Darius, for whatever reason, was motivated to search for the truth, to find out, is there this decree from Cyrus? Because if there is, it changes everything. If there's not, then he's going to have to make a decision on whether to let these men build or not build. Uh, but they searched for the truth. Um, so where do we search for the truth? Uh, and it's the scriptures. You know, the, the Bible says in Acts 17, 11, when um, Paul came and, and preached to the Bereans, and the Bereans listened to him, uh, and it says, then they search the scripture daily to see whether those things he said were true. Acts 17, 11 is one of my favorite verses. Um, when you're listening to this um, video, um, then, then you can have your Bibles open and go search. And, and uh, I did my own little search trying to find out if I could biblically confirm that these two Darius were the same. I really wanted them to be the same. But as I searched the scriptures, searched the, the, the archives of history, well, they don't appear to be the same. Um, and so um, I did read uh, one commentary from somebody who I really like listening to. Um, and he teaches it as if they're the same. Um, but I just can't. They might be. I don't think so. But uh, um, the point is that you search to make sure the things that you use, we do things differently. Sometimes we have, well, I've got this hobby horse of, a, of an issue that I want to talk about. And then I find a script, a random scripture to back up what I think. And I say, and that's not how it goes. That's why we do expository preaching for myself to go verse by verse, precept on precept, to make sure that I'm not spewing my own feelings and opinions. And so today, uh, we're studying what happened. And God moves Darius to search diligently to find this scroll, to find this decree. And he finds it in verse 3. He says, in the first year of King Cyrus... King, and this is the, the scroll he finds. And it says, in the first year of King Cyrus, King Cyrus issued a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be rebuilt, the place where they offered sacrifices. <clears throat> Let the foundations of it be firmly laid. Its height, 60 cubits, its width, 60 cubits, with three rows of heavy stones, with one row of new timber. Let the expenses be paid by the king's treasury. Also let the gold and silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple, which is in Jerusalem, be brought to Babylon to be restored and taken back to the temple, which is Jerusalem, each in its place and deposit them in the house of God. So this is something we've read before, it's a very beginning of the book of Ezra. And it is, um, well, it's found. So now he has, the the words in front of them, the truth is there. Um, so what are you going to do with it now that you've got it? Um, what's the next step? <clears throat> the Bereans searched the scriptures daily. 
to see whether these things are true. Um, and now that they found the truth, um, they got to follow it. They have to do it. I, I found a really interesting verse. It's in John chapter five. And Jesus is defending his deity uh, to the Pharisees and they're, they're not buying it. Obviously they, they never did. And Jesus responds to them in John five, verse 37. He says, the father himself who sent me has testified of me. You've neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. And remember when he was baptized, the voice of heaven, this is my beloved son. So in his trying to bring evidence of his deity, he, he uses the very voice of his father. Verse 38, but you do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent him, you do not believe. This is important. They know the word. In fact, look at verse 39. This is the one I wanted you to see. You search the scriptures just like the Bereans did. For in them, you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me, but you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. In the word, we have the truth. Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus is the word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So the truth of the universe is that God created the heavens and the earth and he placed man in a garden and man walked with God and talked with God and God created woman out of the rib of a man. And God said, do anything you want in this garden, eat anything you want except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat. Well, Adam ate that fruit, and because of that, Romans 5, Adam's sin and the penalty of sin, wages of sin is death, it's passed to all men. So the human race is, and, and the earth itself is under the curse of the fall of man from Genesis. And because of that, there's none righteous, no, not one, Romans 3.10. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. No one's perfect. We all admit that. We all know that. And so there's a problem. We are now separated from God. The wages of sin is death. That word death means separation. If you physically die, you're physically separated from your body, your soul and spirit. Uh, spiritual death, the second death, is the separation of our soul and spirit from God. But Romans 5, 8 says, God demonstrated his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because even though the, the weight of sin is death, Romans 6, 23, the second part of that verse is, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross. And whoever believes in him will never perish, but have everlasting life, John 3, 16. Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart he's risen from the dead, you'll be saved. So these are all written in this book. And, and we search the scriptures daily to find out whether it's in there. And it's in there. Um, but in verse 39 of John 5, these men search the scriptures um, and they all testified of Jesus Christ, and yet they still rejected the scriptures, opposite of the Bereans. The Bereans grew daily because uh, they searched to see if what Paul was saying was true about Jesus, and they said, it is, and they were changed forever. Others searched the scriptures to find loopholes, to find mistakes, to find misspelling, or whatever they're looking for. So they can blaspheme God. But if you truly come to the Bible to search for truth and accept it as truth, oh, your, your whole perspective of life changed. You are transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 2. 
So this comes back to Ezra chapter six. And this wasn't scriptures they were reading, although they were decrees of God. So they were God's instructions to build this temple. And God maneuvered this King Cyrus to write this decree. And now he's moved Darius to search out and find this, this decree. Um, so verse six of Ezra six, how do they respond? Well, therefore, Tetanai, governor of the region beyond the river, and uh, Shethar Bosnai, and your companions, the Persians who are beyond the river, keep yourselves far from there. Let the work of the house of God alone. Let the governors of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God on its site. Leave them alone. Let them build. That's what Darius says. Let the work of the house of God alone. You know, this is truly the liberty that our forefathers wanted for uh, our nation. Religious freedom. The freedom to, to put a cross on our lawn. The freedom to put a nativity scene in a park. The freedom to, to preach the gospel. Uh, the freedom to worship as we pleased. Uh, that's separation of church and state. It's not even a constitutional thing. It was just a statement made. But the idea of the separation of church and state is that the, the state will have no interference in, in the work of religion. This is why they left under the oppressive king of England. Uh, and they were being told what to worship, how to worship, who to worship. And they didn't want that. And so you go back to the pilgrims and back to the, the forefathers. And it was all built on this fact that the word of God is the source of truth. And man should be left to his own worship. And so the government here has this decree. And he not just searches for the truth. Once he finds the truth, he obeys the truth. And the truth is, leave them alone. Let them worship. Um, it's sad. They're, the, the places, look at, if you look at the entire world, and the Bible says in Romans 1, that men will have suppressed the truth. So uh, the Bible being true, God created the heavens and the earth. We are all children of, of God. And Jesus Christ is the only way to God, John 14, 6. There's no other religions. It's not some ecumenical, you know, coexistence. It's Jesus Christ and Christ alone. It's not even Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran. It's not Catholic, Protestant. It is Christ. He is the foundation. He's the only way. And the body of believers is made up that um, by those who have sincerely trusted in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, repented of their sins, and turned to Christ to, for forgiveness. So in that manner, the truth of the universe is Christ. So just think about the nations of the world. Um, there are communist nations, there are Muslim nations, there are Hindu nations. Um, there may be nations considering themselves Roman Catholic. Um, but is there a nation that, that is a Christian nation? Does that exist? Um, that's the big trigger word, Christian nationalism. Um, well, I love my nation. I love Christ. Call it what you want. I don't uh, we're, we're not pushing to have a Christian nation. We are pushing for a nation that would be built on the principles of Christ and the morals of Christ. But we don't, we're not going to make it a law to be Christian. We would desire that every man come to know the Lord. Uh, Christ says, and not willing that any should perish. But the idea here is that our nation, one nation under God, if, if any nation is close to one that would stand on the principles of, of, of Jesus Christ, it would be America. And yet how many places in America are you not even allowed to talk about Jesus Christ? All the truth is suppressed. 
Well, here, in the true concept of liberty, verse 7, let the work of the house of God alone. And that's what I pray for. I, 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 I'm in a, a, a chapter in my life in which, whether it's my own actions or, or the actions of, of the enemy, I don't know at this point. Uh, but I feel my ability to preach is being uh, attacked. There's hindrances to it. And I just pray for the day where I feel that I can be left alone to preach. Maybe it's never going to happen. But I feel that liberty is being challenged in that ability to do so. Um, verse 8. It says, moreover, I issue what, moreover, I mean, that should be enough. So what Darius does, this is amazing. He not only says, no, this is Cyrus, I found it. Yeah, leave him alone, let him build. But then he takes it a step further. Moreover, I issue a decree as to what you shall do for the elders of the Jews for the building of this house of God. Let the cost be paid at the king's expense from the taxes on the region beyond the river. This is to be given immediately to these men so they are not hindered. Not only is he not going to hinder the work of God, he's going to make sure it gets done. He's going to help them. I, I think he's, and there's, there's going to be a motivation for this that we're going to see in a second. Um, but understand that his motivation doesn't matter. It's God doing this. It's incredible. Whatever they need, young bulls, rams, lambs for the burnt offering, of the God of heaven, call them the God of heaven. Wheat, salt, wine, oil, according to the request of the priests who are in Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail, whatever they need every day. It's not just leave them alone, but let the government supply and encourage instead of taking, you know, in. in in our nation, we have um, ministries that that don't pay taxes. It, it was a way at a time where religion was uh, given this high respect, and and they were uh, free from paying taxes. In this case, it was more. It was like they got taxes and they gave them um, to the government, and and the government gave them to religious organizations so to speak, to build this church. It was incredible. Um, much more than they asked. And, and that's the principle here. You know, the Bible says in Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given to you. Press in good measure, press down, shaken together, running over, will be put in your bosom. For with the same measure you use it, it'll be measured back to you. Press down, shaken together, overflowing. If you're serving God, and just continue to, uh, and Liz and I have seen it. We had a, some overflowing this week, just of blessings. And, and uh, I'm just, uh, I, I, just, I just love God. I, I do. I love him so much. And uh, I want to serve him. And uh, I'm going to press on to the best of my ability. Um, but boy, does he ever go beyond. In fact, listen to this verse, Ephesians 3.20. This is one you should kind of commit to memory, put on your fridge. But it's a great, it says, now to him, Jesus, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Have you ever prayed for something? And then it, God did more than you asked him to do. Uh, this happened to Liz and I this week. We had a specific prayer on Sunday night for just a little issue. And, and it was uh, uh, taken care of. Uh, on, and what we prayed for on Sunday night, that would happen Monday, happened Monday morning. But then it went, well, oh, wait, it, we didn't ask you to do that, God, but he went beyond it. And then Monday night, it went even further beyond it. And I can't even... Uh, explain the details to you but it was beautiful and so we have some serious challenges up uh, in front of us that we're praying for god to do the same thing just praying for him um 
And, and that's what happened. All, they just wanted to be left alone. So God left them alone and then God supplied everything they needed. So the first time the letter went out to the king, they stopped. This time they just are going to continue the work, continue the work. And because that's what God told them to do. And God did abundantly more than they could ever dream of. Um, which brings us to verse 10. There's a reason why Darius does this. And it's an interesting reason. He says that they may sacrifice of, they may offer sacrifices of sweet aroma to God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his sons. He says, I want them, the reason he was so motivated to get it done, because then they should go in and pray for me. I need them to pray for me. And, and there, there is, um, so does that mean that he was a Christian? Well, he calls, it's interesting in verse nine, he uses the phrase, the God of heaven, mm -hmm. instead of the God of Israel. Um, so it, it's, it's hard to say. This is why I want this to be the same Darius as Daniel. Uh, but if it is or isn't, it doesn't matter in this case. It is a man who recognizes something in the God of Israel. Um, some commentators would say, well, he probably does this with every, every nation. Whatever your king is, I want to make sure all of your different gods are, are on my side. Which is possibility. Um, or um, he recognizes something different. Either way, um, let me tell you this for a fact. If the leaders in our nation, instead of warring against the church, warring against those who know Christ, warring against what they consider to be uh, narrow-minded, homophobic, bigoted attitudes, if they would join, not, not to be, this king didn't have to become an Israelite, but if they would lean on the body to join them in prayer and, and unleash the body of Christ as an ally, oh, this nation would, would thrive. It would thrive. And so we look and we pray for that, that there'd be a time when church and state, you know, the, the state leaves the churches alone and the church will in turn in, increase and encourage the moral and the um, prayer life of this nation. It'd, it'd be amazing. There's a testimony years ago <clears throat> from a, a missionary called Vance Nordman, and his testimony was in Russia, the, the uh, there was a opening uh, for missionaries to get to Russia. The curtain kind of fell. This is back in I think seventies or eighties, and and uh, there's an opportunity to, to get to Russia. And one of the things uh, they were able to do is Russia was looking for classes on morality that they have noticed that their young people were immoral, uh, and and criminally and, and different things like that. And so they were, were asking missionaries that they could come to their schools and do classes on morality. And the missionary says, well, we, can we use the Bible? And they said, oh, of course. So here they were in, in Russia using the scriptures in public schools uh, because the, the, the leadership understood they needed God's help. And, uh, what an army of God the church could be. Now, let me say this, that whatever side of the political realm you're on, <clears throat> you ought to be praying for your leaders, praying for your president, praying for your vice president, praying for your governor, praying for your uh, local government, that, that just because you don't agree with their policies, uh, you need to pray, pray for their salvation, pray that they would be, uh, molded in the hand of God as, as Darius has been, that there would be some miraculous changes. The same God is doing this in the building of the temple. Remember, they, they probably shouldn't have stopped in the first place. God probably would have blessed them, but they stopped 
but now they're they're obedient going back. So um, verse 11, uh, he says, I issue a decree that those who alter this edict, in other words, those who go against it, let a timber be pulled, this is verse 11, from his house and erected and let him be hanged on it. And let this house be made a refuse heap because of this. And may the God who causes his name to dwell there destroy any kind of people who put their hand to alter it or to destroy this house of God, which is in Jerusalem. I, Darius, issue a decree. Let it be done diligently. diligently. So he takes the decree of Cyrus, and then he adds to it. I'm going to provide. I'm going to help. I want them to get this done so they can get in there and start praying for me. And then he goes to say, if anyone alters this, uh, I'm going to hang you on a timber from your house and your house will be uh, put into rubble. Uh, and so may the God who causes his name to dwell there, verse two, whoever this God is, um, let him protect it also. And so they supply all their needs and he supplies protection. God, our provider, Jehovah Jireh, and God, our protector. And he certainly is. First Thessalonians 3.3 3 says, But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. We have that same promise. In the New Testament, Isaiah 41.10, Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. This Sunday, we'll talk about the armor of God and what it is and how it is. It protects us. Hebrews 13.55, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content in the things you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may say boldly, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. So those Old and New Testaments now come together in the promise of God for protection and guide. First John 4, 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. And in the first three verses of 1 John 4, it talks about the antichrists that will rise up. But he says, you've overcome them because he who is in you is greater that he that's in the world. Second Corinthians 4, 7, it says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. The treasure is our salvation, Christ. That the excellence of the power of God may be of God and not of us. So we want the power and strength to come from God and not us. Second Corinthians 4, 8, we are hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. We understand um, that the persecution of Christ um, brought salvation to us. Romans 8.31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Uh, we are more than conquerors in Christ. We have that same protection over and over mentioned in scriptures. Uh, so we press on, which is verse 13 through 15, the idea of knowing that you have your needs being met, knowing that you have the protection of God, the miracles of Darius working with them. So now you get to work. And you press on. So Tetanai, verse 13, the governor of the region beyond the river, uh, Shethar Bosnai, and all the companions diligently did according to what the king Darius said. They just obeyed it. So the elders of the Jews built and they prophesied as and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai and the prophet Zachariah, the son of Ido. So the spiritual leaders are working, the, the, the men and women are under submission. They built and finished it. Now, the Bible says to press on towards the, the, the high calling of God, Philippians 3, 14. The Bible says to, to put your hands on the plow, not to look back and to continue forward. Um, 
And they'd been according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the command of Cyrus, Darius, and Anaxerxes, king of Persia. He's going to, a later king, that the, this work is going to continue. It's not going to be without struggle, but Anaxerxes actually takes us into Nehemiah. Now the temple was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. So it took about four years and they finished the work. And that's where we're at. And, and that's where my mental and spiritual attention is. I don't know what else to do, but to do the work. And that is to, to do, to preach the word in love, to study, uh, to rightly divide, to present, you know, uh, the, the life now is, is different. But the, the, as God has laid out, you know, the, the midweek studies and the Sunday studies and, and uh, wherever else God would open a door to preach and share and visit. It's just, you take it day by day. I don't know if I'm doing it, it right or wrong. I'm just doing it according to what I've read in the word to do, uh, that we might be given to prayer and to study. And so the study is, is solid, I feel. Prayer life is, is getting there, you know. Um, so what are you doing? Where is that, that, that work that you're supposed to be doing? And are you doing it? Are you following through? Are you pressing on? Uh, have you been hindered by distractions and, and decrees and philosophies and to which it's got you kind of stagnant and stopping? Um, or are you going to press on? Well, the work is finished, and uh, what it results in is actually just pure joy. The children of Israel and the priests and the Levites and the rest of the descendants of captivity celebrated with dedication of this house of God with joy. They offered sacrifices and the dedication of the house of God, 100 bulls, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and as a sin offering of Israel, 12 male goats, according to the number, they assigned the priests and their divisions and the Levites to the divisions and over the service of Jerusalem, as it was written in the book of Moses, verse 18. So they just started following, now that they had everything ready, the temple and everything in, not close to what Solomon had. If you look at the numbers, what Solomon offered when that temple was dedicated, it's not even close. But it doesn't matter. They have what, what God has given them. And it's a miracle what Darius has done. And, and remember, they went 15 years doing nothing. Now, within four years, they have it done, ready to pray for Darius and the other kings. Verse 19 says, the descendants of the captivity kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. For the priests and the Levites had purified themselves. They were ritually clean. They slaughtered the Passover lambs and all the descendants of the captivity for their brethren, the priests, and themselves. They're just now got the book of Moses, they got the temple, they got the offerings, they're holding the Passover on the correct day. And there's just pure joy, pure joy. You can have that. You can have that pure joy of having everything set right in your life. Everything the way it's supposed to be. The love, joy, and peace, and gentleness that, that God offers. So verse 21 this is a great verse. We're going to close with these last two verses. Then the children of Israel who had returned from captivity ate together with all who had separated themselves from the filth of the nations in the land in order to seek the Lord God of Israel. Um, so there is, there's this idea that there's kind of this lost tribes of Israel and that the two tribes of Judas continued and the other 10 tribes. Of, no, they, they, everybody was there. Who was, was ready to worship? Who was ready for this joy? Look what it says. The children of Israel who had returned from captivity ate together with all who had separated themselves from the filth of the nations of the land in order to seek the Lord God of Israel. And that's our salvation today. That is Christ. Whosoever, there's neither Jew nor Greek, rich nor poor, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That truth we talked about, the universe we talked about earlier, uh, 
confessing your sins and, and, and uh, uh, giving your life to Christ. It's available to anybody, anybody who wants to leave the, the, the sin of this world for a relationship of forgiveness and purity in Christ. Uh, it, it, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I came to Jesus because I was a sinner and I needed those sins forgiven. And yet, as I got here, a lot of people say, well, I shouldn't be talking about Jesus because I'm a sinner. Well, what's the point then? If, if, if we're not allowed to talk about Jesus because we have sin in our past, then, then what's the point? We're new creations. All things have passed away. All things become new. You start today. Well, you don't understand, Pastor. I be, became a Christian and I still... Confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. First John 1, 9. Look at verse 22. They kept the feast of the unleavened bread seven days with joy. For the Lord made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria toward them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God. So there was complete joy because for 15 years they lived in fear and, and disobedience, and now within four years, God opened the door. Man, I pray for that chapter in my life. How about you? Do you pray for a, a time of, of, of growth and a time of, of victory? Man, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. I just pray if anybody doesn't know you as a Lord and Savior, that this amazing chapter would motivate them to come under uh, the cleanliness and purity and forgiveness of Christ away from the filth that is outside of his body. And Lord, that they would have their sins completely forgiven and they would have doors opened and blessings flow in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you soon.